So what rifle is this? The model 1819 Hall rifle. Made Harper's Ferry, designed by J.H. Hall. First breech loading firearm ever to be made by the U.S. military. This was invented at the time when everything was muzzle loading flintlocks. This was originally a, a breech loading flintlock. That loads set up from the muzzle from the breech. Okay. It's a swiveling breech that'll pop up, load the powder in the ball in there. And let's load it, load it down, and fire. As opposed to having to stand straight up and down and pour powder in a ball on the top. Muzzle. Yeah, from the muzzle. And ram it down with the ramrod. This you could lay prone, load it, and fire it. Any markings? Yeah, there's marking right on the top. J.H. Hall, Harper's Ferry, U.S. 1826. Hall sold this idea to the U.S. government. They officially adopted it in 1819, and he was allowed to build it in Harper's Ferry to make this right. Part of the selling point of it was not only the technology of the breech loading, but also the standardized production. Hall built was allowed to build the design and build the machines in his factory in Harpers Ferry that would allow machines to make parts that were interchangeable. So one of the trials Hall had to do was take a hundred rifles built in his factory, take them completely apart, mix all the parts, then have all those guns put back together again. But with you know using interchangeable parts, and mm -hmm. he did that in front of the ordnance department, and they and proved that the guns were interchangeable. The parts are interchangeable. I'll take a shot on the other side. Hold up. I'm going to save these from my house. What caliber is this? It's a 52 caliber rifled gun. It is a rifle, not a, not a smooth bore. It's interesting in that because it loaded from the breech, in order to get that tightness that's needed to spin a rifle ball through the rifling that you would normally get with a patch and ball loaded from the muzzle, yeah. they had to start it so the breech was wider and it swaged down as it progressed down the barrel. So the, it starts off at above 52 caliber and it reaches 52 caliber by the time it reaches the end. That's how you create that tight seal with the rifling without having a patch. It would be impossible to put a patch and ball into the breech because of the gap, it would hang up the patch. Yeah. I've never seen it. There's a lot of interesting design besides the obvious breech loading advantage that this had. You, you didn't make the action directly to the stock. There's a gap in case there's a blowout uh, with obstructions. It'll let gas blow out the sides without shattering the stock. Also, because it loads from the breach, if it starts getting too crudded up, to actually lift this breach up, because black powder fouling is pretty ugly. Yeah. The top one inch is not rifled, it's counterboard, so you could load it down the muzzle if the breech got stuck and still fire it. At no time during the target change. All right, load her up. Okay, just one last thing about this hall. This one was originally a flintlock. The flash hole was directly where this nipple is now, and there was a pan and the frizzin for hitting the flint and sparking right here. So this was originally a flintlock. When they converted them to percussion, they just had to change the hammer, grind flat the pan, and tap the nipple into what was the flash hole. Okay. Another thing about this gun is that you could take out this one screw right here take out this whole breech block, which contained the trigger. So it actually became a handgun if you needed it in a pinch. A two inch barreled handgun. You could literally take this thing out. And, fire. and because of the design with the hammer on top, the sight is set off, so that you couldn't have the sight notch right in the middle. 
the, the notch is offset and the front uh, sight slash bayonet lug is off to the left. Okay. So that's the way you can sight without having this obstruction here. All right, so let's load this thing. Yep, lift it up. Originally, these were loaded with self-contained cartridges that were in paper and, you know, paper patch, paper cartridge. had the ball and the powder already in it, similar to what you see in Civil War uh, cartridge. So it would be originally one contained paper cartridge with the ball that you just take the end, pour it down, pour the powder down the barrel, down the... <laughs> The breech block here, and then you would shove the pat, the paper, the ball still in the paper to the breech. Since I'm not using paper patch, the cartridge, I made some pieces of paper with me to, to put in with the ball to keep that ball from rolling forward. Because diameter of the breech here is wider than the ball and it could roll forward into the mm -hmm. breech and create obstruction and could create a dangerous blowback situation. So to keep that ball from rolling forward, I shoved paper in there. Okay. The soldier didn't have to worry about that because the paper was already on the cartridge. You just shoved the ball with the paper yeah. into it. Yeah, think about yeah, yeah. yourself. That's no. why. You do this and you start out with the walker. Last thing I wanted to do was tip this thing forward, have that ball roll down an inch, <laughs> yeah. set that thing off, and then boom. You start with the walker, it'll make it even. Blow. So now this loaded. You guys want to make it 12? I should have snapped the cap first. Hopefully this will go off. I didn't clear the didn't clear the oil out of the nipple, which is my mistake. Normally with the percussion, you, know, you want to flash a cap or before you fire just to make sure that uh, clear out the channel targets five yards targets 25 yards Oof. see a little bit of the smoke coming out at the gap yeah. and reach and also a little bit bleeding out in the blowout area then the advantage was you didn't have to stand up while bullets are whizzing by you to load this thing again. You could be laying prone or tilt up a little bit. The rate of fire is also much faster because you don't have to be standing and pouring down powder, ball, and ramrod. All you have to do is powder in. Perfect. Well, look at this time. How much better I did this time. Plop the ball in. Way better, you know? And good to go. downside, Steve, might be that you have glasses. So you can see how quickly this was to reload. Yeah, compared to... And if you were trained with it, compared to a muzzleloading gun, and if you were trained, you'd even do it better. That's probably things like... This one is a pain in the neck. You have to get back up and let it slam. Yeah, it is heavier. I don't think it's heavier. It's, it's smaller. It's weighted differently, so it feels heavier. It's like those shots were pretty consistent. Yeah, two hits on target. Is that on safety? Check the safety. Another engineering aspect of the hall is that the trigger is adjustable too. You could actually adjust the trigger pull. So this guy Hall was pretty far ahead of his time when it came to firearms technology. They produced these in Harpers Ferry until 1844, and they were contracted to a manufacturer named Simeon North, and, he, and Simeon North factory produced these into 1850s. They also made a carbine version of this, a couple different variants of the carbine. Mm -hmm. Some were rifled, some were smoothbore. Don't tell me the thing just fell out. Just fell out. That's a good gun. That one's a little higher <laughs> to the right of the other two. So there you have it. I really don't like the Model 1819 yeah, Hall well, Rifle from Harpers Ferry Arsenal. 1826. Beautiful. Can you disturb your grip left grip on the side of it? Tighter, it'll be 
Dan Rain. We got one at 12 o'clock and two at the three o'clock. Thank you for showcasing it. You're welcome. Now time to feed up that black powder. Yeah. Now we go to the Martini Henry, which is 45 caliber, but it's not the kind of rifling that we're used to. Uh, it basically has Henry rifling. It's referred to uh, by, uh, better by Alexander Henry, a gunsmith again, in Scotland. 